Welcome back to the Weather Center, everyone. Happy Monday, June 23rd, 2025. I know technically we had a video yesterday, but since we still have some stuff to talk about out there, on top of the fact that it was my own doing as to why we had a video yesterday and not Saturday, let alone Friday, I feel it's only right that we deliver our regularly scheduled Monday tropical update. And so with that being said, we have a number of things I want to address, so we're going to try to rapid fire through all this get you the information that you need if you're brand new to the channel it would sincerely mean a lot to me if you hit that subscribe button going to continue to pump out these reliable timely and accurate tropical weather outlooks as we continue through the 2025 hurricane season give that like button a little nudge we need all the nudges that we can get especially before things really get to rocking out there share this information if you find it beneficial as well as you think those will benefit from it as well and drop me a comment down below not only let me know what your thoughts are on the topic of discussion for today did we miss our first named storm and also let me know your thoughts on the hurricane season so far let me know where you're tuning in from strike up that conversation i love getting to connect with all of you so it's amazing to see all the wonderful comments that you leave so let me know in the comments down below but let's go ahead and rock into this so we still have now Invest 90L out there. I made a video yesterday, at least I should say a bit of a new segment to attach to what I wanted to upload for you all on Saturday. And I'd mentioned it'll be very interesting to see if they do designate this as an area of investigation. And I'm glad that they did. And you know, truth be told, we have seen the chances drop. We're now out of the red zone. We were hovering at a 70-70 split over not only the next 48 hours, but the next seven days. And to tell you the truth, the next seven days, I'm not too sure if it works that way, but it's almost like the 48-hour percentage should be much higher than seven days because this thing's not going to have a fighting chance to do much of anything probably within the next six to 12 hours. By the time a lot of us go to bed tonight, we're going to see those hostile conditions really beginning to take hold for it. And as a result, we're going to quickly see these percentages start to go down. Now, I think, and again, let me know in the comments, everybody out there, even if you don't really have much to say on it, you know, based off of a lot of the parameters and the data that I looked at, it's also June 23rd. This thing started to spawn in more or less by the 21st, this past Saturday into Sunday. I think we're right on schedule. I think we may have missed our first named storm. It's not the first time this has happened. Had a couple of instances last hurricane season, and I'm by no means stepping on National Hurricane Center's toes. I promise you all right now, I'm going to throw my hands up and say, you know, white flag. I'm not trying to start a fight or create any drama or anything like that. But if it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's kind of like a situation ship. Are we a real thing? Are we not? You know, do we have a title? Is it still free reign? Does it fall under any kind of rules or expectations? Things like that. And so I'll walk you through a couple of different parameters here in a second, but I also want to get you over to the Eastern Pacific. I'll get my face out of the way once again. We don't have an invest on this side of the woods just yet, but we are code red with disturbance number one up to now a 70% shot of development over the next seven days. Not going to spend too much time on here because this kind of goes without saying the East Pack has been doing its thing. Going to continue to watch the Atlantic, though. There's a couple other areas that I'm closely monitoring that I do think could kind of throw a surprise or two our way. So we'll switch over to the full disk goes east satellite. And right off the rip, this is our area that we're watching right there. And you can kind of see a number of different dynamics in play in its immediate vicinity. We have winds out of the northeast. It was going to say north we're heading out of the north. <laughs> you know, you guys know what I'm trying to say. We have northeasterly flow on the backside of a trough that is very heavily positively tilted. That's what kind of helped to spin this thing up to begin with. It was right on the leading edge of an upper level trough which if you know the basic principles of divergence aloft ahead of a trough is one of our favorite sayings to say in air force weather when we first started to learn about atmospheric science that's where you get a lot of your upper level forcing you got good lift out ahead of it divergence and so on and so forth and that's where this thing kind of started to do its own thing if you look at the cloud patterns here as well it looks like we had leftover remnants of a dissipating front, which is precisely what I'm going to be watching closer to home here, and I'll talk you through that momentarily. But now, 
we've got a couple different things starting to bear down on it. A couple different upper level lows, believe it or not. There's one to its south, one to its north. We're also starting to get a little bit more of that wind shearing effect as that trough gets bullied further towards the east over the upper Atlantic as a result of this extremely dominant ridge. Look at that thing. That screams negative PNA quite literally 3,000 miles away. You can see a trough extending through the Rockies, and you can see where we might get a little bit of significant thunderstorm activity. It looks like a line of convergence right in between the two right there just rotating around that enormous clockwise spin that is sandwiched this thing is stubborn it has not gone anywhere it's oscillated a little bit it's kind of done a jig back and forth to the west to the east to the west kind of embracing you know to the left to the left <laughs> if y'all get the reference but it's been marinating there now going into early july we're starting to see indications this pattern is finally going to lift a little bit it could also be a response to us finally getting into the calendar summertime i'd mentioned to you all some of these pressure patterns are going to gain a little bit more latitude as we rock through the rest of june and especially july and august which will likely open the gates a little bit more for the main development region of the atlantic in through the caribbean to finally do something now, the Pacific monsoonal trough has been very aggressive. If you look at the satellite shot here, you can see it a thousand miles away as well. Our disturbance is buried somewhere within the eastern extent of this Pacific monsoonal trough, and you can kind of see almost an extension of that through our ITCZ. Look at how much showers and storms have really developed for portions of the ABC Islands, the Windward Islands, Trinidad, Tobago might be getting in on some of the action too, although this looks to be more upper-level clouds, high-level clouds, the Guianas, Venezuela are also seeing a lot of the thunderstorms, not as much in Colombia or immediately overtopped Panama and Costa Rica, thankfully. It looks like a lot of it is more into the Caribbean over open water, which is interesting. But yeah, you know, it kind of goes without saying we're starting to slowly see the makings of the summertime. Now, enough of my hot winded spiel. Let's go ahead and speed this up a little bit. Here is Invest 90L. Now a naked swirl, which is why I do think we're going to see those probabilities, the chances of formation just continue to exponentially plummet. If you notice on either end of this puppy as well, we have an upper low that's spun up right there. You can definitely see that's upper level. If you look very closely, I'll slow down the satellite loop here. You notice early on in the loop, you can see some of that popcorn cumulus, maybe lower stratus deck underneath the cloud. It's in the mid to upper levels, that cirrus and the, str the cirrus stratus wrapping around around like so right there to the immediate north of our invest our invest is right there this is one upper low that's beginning to develop and then we have another very broad circulation to the south right there and then if you notice you have all these increased winds beginning to build into the northwest thanks to our trough finally making its way through and we're now in the bottleneck. We were doing very well for ourselves over the weekend, but now as Monday continues and especially overnight tonight into Tuesday, we're going to lose any potential that this thing tries to get going. You switch over to the infrared satellite, you get a better view. You can see just an extreme increase in our wind speeds right there as that trough gets bullied off. It looks like we're going to get maybe a bit of breakaway energy right in through here. Since it's such, a, it's in such a positive tilt, you have strong jet max winds coming over the upper portion, the the apex of our ridge over the eastern United States. So what was once a very favorable quadrant is now being pinched off. And notice in the last couple pieces of the loop there, right there, that little guy. Notice how the convection really disappears. We still have some puff ups and some flare ups as a result of the shear and maybe the dry air that's starting to wrap around the southern side of it, but. It's a lost cause at this point. It's not going to get a name, and I do really think, I wholeheartedly think, we were right on schedule. On average, between June 18th through June 22nd is when we get our first named storm. I think this was it, albeit very short-lived. And the, rain, the main reason they didn't name it, if I'm being very blunt and transparent with you all, the politics. There really wasn't any urgency to it. This is more or less satellite eye candy, a little, oh, look at that kind of thing out there across the Atlantic. It's not going to have any impact on anyone's weather, nor would it ever have, even if it did take on a name. They were never going to issue any watches, warnings, advisories on it outside of just the TWOs, the weather outlooks. So 
I can understand why National Hurricane Center kind of, you know, pinged it to see if we would get a real bona fide tropical entity out of it. It does seem like there was about a 12 to 24 hour window where this did have tropical storm characteristics with it. The ASCAT looked good. When you take a cross section of it, it was definitely warm core in nature. It was by itself, not attached to any fronts. It was in that favorable wind shear sector, getting that upper level influence from the trough. So coulda, shoulda, woulda. But I wholeheartedly think... We just had our first storm, and we're kind of right on schedule with climatology. Now, we're going to quickly go through where I'm watching next. Not only is the Caribbean still a spot, same with the Bay of Campeche, but I want you to notice what our tropical probabilities on the Euro do. There are those 90L right there. I'm going to go ahead and erase that, but that's what that bit of colorful shading there moving off towards the northeast is but watch what happens off the coast of florida again as i forward us through time this is now the 30th through july 7th look at the difference there you go from the 7th to the 14th of july and that signal is still there and i think that has a lot to do with our pattern flipping here very soon you come over to your euro ensembles and this is already fast forwarded to the end of the loop and notice we've got some spaghetti members shooting right off the mid-Atlantic, the southeast coast of the United States. I'm looking right in through here as that trough that's currently over the Rockies slowly but surely bullies our upper ridge down in amplitude ever so slightly. We're going to get a weak front to come through, and even our operational models are picking up on that. So if we go through the Euro, let me close myself out. By the way, there is 90L. Take a look at that. Definitely not attached to anything. It's definitely its own little beast. And this is 30 hours out. And notice that even the Euro still has it tightening up and consolidating some as we go through about 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. tomorrow morning. Then as we go past the 36-hour mark, look at what happens. See how it gets picked up with the rest of the pattern? Notice the contour lines here, the black lines. This is your general jet stream flow, very positively tilted trough, and it isn't until it gets up in there, gone. So maybe National Hurricane Center will pull the trigger. I don't think they will. But anyways, let's fast forward and watch what happens. See how the ridge begins to break down. It pushes back into the Atlantic. And then look at that front coming down. And watch closely. Look at the tail end of it off the Florida coast. Kind of begins to take on a little bit of that persona right in through there where you can see my cursor. This is echoed on the Euro AI counterpart. You fast forward through time, you see that ridge break down. Here comes the trough. Look at the front right in through there where my cursor is. You go just a little further in time, and there you have it. A little bit of coastal cyclogenesis right over the warm continental shelf, the Gulf Stream waters, and then it continues to slowly meander off towards the east-northeast since it's now back underneath what looks to be our Bermuda High, the subtropical ridge. And this has been there for a little bit, too. I know I'm probably going to jinx myself like I always do, but you go to 6Z, there it is. You go back to 0Z, there it is. You go back to 18 Zulu yesterday, there it is. You go to 12Z, there it is, more or less, just an elongated shape. It hasn't quite hit the board yet. There actually, as a matter of fact, there's a little bit of that surface reflection right there, just stretched out, still looks a little frontal in nature. But regardless, that's where we're going to be watching. You come over to the GFS, and there's a couple things I want you to see. First and foremost... We also have a fairly decent signal for 90L right there before it gets picked up and absorbed back into the pattern. You can see our high pressure begin to push back into the Atlantic. There goes our front. And you see, you know, obviously we're seeing multiple areas of spin along the tail end of that leftover front, but the same general story is there. We'll have to watch the end of that front before our next upper low mid-latitude feature comes through to scoop it up out of there. And we'll see if it plops out over open water, perhaps we get a little something. Lines up really well with what we're seeing in our ensembles and other operational models. And then the other thing I want you to notice before we wrap up is I'll zoom us down into the tropical Atlantic, go back in time. For those of you voting the season off, like I've been saying, we just got to give it a little time because the waves are there. The pattern is there. We're just waiting for the lid to come off. And when it does... Regardless of how many named storms we get, these are going to be headed our way. Lesser Antilles, we'll have to watch for you all. Greater Antilles, I'm going to be watching the Turks and Caicos, the Bahamas for my hotspot areas. But regardless, if you notice on the GFS echoed on other models as well, the Canadian and the Euro, you can see as I slowly scroll through, we've got some fairly decent wave action out there. Fairly decent tropical waves. I highlighted a couple of them there, but if I continue through the loop, here comes another one plopping off. Then there goes another one. 
And then here comes another one. Look at that spin. That's a really nice spin right there. And in fact, as we continue to transition to less aggressive easterly winds and upper level winds moving out of the east, and we transition to a better gradient across that area, I'll show you very quickly on cyclonic weather. This, I think, has a better overlay than Tropical Tidbits does. It's not only color-coded, but it also has the streamlines on it. Let me go over to that real quick. If you notice, as we begin to transition to more of a westerly wind flow out there across the MDR, not only is that going to instigate lift, but it's going to drop our wind shear. You come over to your 200 millibar zonal anomaly, and you see the same thing there. We're starting to transition to a bit of a better look. If I go back to the beginning of the loop, that's not that great. We have very strong easterly winds out there. Same thing with the Caribbean. We are rocking through there as well. Look at the westerlies in the upper levels. But then as you fast forward through time, See the changing in the pattern down there? So things are starting to lift. Things are definitely going to slowly come into phase with where they need to be. I always go full screen, and then I bring myself back up. But anyways, key takeaways, 90L, I really do think we were right on target with that average start time of the first name storm. It's just a matter of our official agency, National Hurricane Center, deciding they're not going to name it not going to name it. And you know what? That's no harm, no foul. Even without a name, we can technically say we had a warm cord, low pressure system out there that likely was the first of our season. So technically speaking, if you want to argue the politics, by all means, I as a meteorologist stay away from the politics and I'm going to call it like it is. You look out there in the environment and we probably had a named storm, probably had tropical storm conditions out there with that tiny little ball of energy out there. So we're technically right on schedule per the calendar. Now we'll have to watch as we rock through July. A couple of attempts could be possible. I'm going to be watching off our southeast coast. Could be a rainmaker for the mid-Atlantic, the northeast, pending where it goes. And if it stays coupled with the upper-level pattern, that plops it down in that general area. Or if it just gets wiped out by the models altogether. But so far, we have a couple of different layers of that that I'll continue to investigate over time. And with that being said, folks, thank you so much for taking some time out of your Monday to join me here in the Weather Center. Once again, feel free to share this information. Please give that like button a little nudge. Consider clicking subscribe if you're brand new to the Weather Center community. And we'll talk to you again soon. But until next time, this is Weather Center Nazario signing out.